Remember that guitar I gave away during the 12 days of Christmas giveaway this past season? And remember that the winner lived in the Philippines and remember that it was gonna cost like double what the guitar was worth just to ship it to him? And then you remember that you guys stepped up and raised enough money for us to send it to him so he could buy the guitar there and not even have to worry about shipping. Well, uh, thank you for that, by the way. Thank you guys so much. This community is really good at like wrapping around people and uh, you guys are here for the giveaways, but then you also give back and it's just, just been really great. If you do the math, I still had a guitar to give away and I was trying to look for a creative way to give it away rather than just doing it via YouTube again. And I met a man by the name of Gary who owns No Fret Guitar Camp. No Fret Guitar Camp, he, he reached out and what he does is he, he made this ministry where they reach out to students, they invite them to this camp, they give them an acoustic guitar, they teach them for a week, and not only that, he doesn't just run all the camps, he actually provides a way for you to run the camp. So if you can play like G, C, and D, you're qualified to teach these kids. And they have a program that you follow them through and they learn songs and it's it's really cool. And I was like, this is awesome. I wanna have him on the channel and that's what this video is about. But first, I wanna let you know that they've done this a while and they've had this past week actually, their thousandth person sign up. And actually it was two people who signed up at the same time. And I said, hey, why don't we, in, the, in an interview you're about to watch, um, with Gary at the end after we got off I was like hey I just had this idea I have this guitar to give away why don't we give that guitar away to like the grand prize winner of the person who is the thousandth person to sign up for the no fret guitar camp and we thought that was a great idea I sent him the guitar and it turns out that like I said two young ladies Bella and Lily both signed at the same time and they both are going to share this guitar I guess I haven't met them but they did send me a video I'll show that clip here in a second and I'll show some show some pictures of them uh, Bella and Lily, I'm so glad that you won. I'm thankful for No Fret Guitar Camp and Gary to be able to pour into students like you guys. I'm so happy that you won this amazing guitar. It has a lot of features. I actually made a video. You can go check it out on how to use it. And if you need any help, just reach out to me. My name's Jimmy. I would love to help you guys. I'm so glad you guys won the guitar. Keep playing. You got this. All right, I'm going to show you a little clip from the winners, and I'm going to show you the interview that I had with Gary. Please stay around and watch this. It's a, it's a ministry that you might want to get involved with as well, and if you do, please reach out to me or Gary. I'll put his information down in the description. All right, let's get into it. Hi, worship leader. I want to say thank you so much to uh, Jimmy Kruger and for the No Fret Guitar Camp. Um, and this is very a blessing and I'm really happy to get to join into this beautiful uh, program. And I just want to say thank you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for everything. I feel very blessed at this moment. Today I have with me a special guest. His name is Gary from No Fret Guitar Camp. How you doing, Gary? Hey, I'm doing that. Uh, if Dave Ramsey would say, better than I deserve. There you go. But as That's I great. add to Dave Ramsey, but not as good as I would like. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> hey, I feel that. I feel that as well. <laughs> Well, I want to have you on the channel because uh, we spoke briefly, and I've seen your website, and I thought, man, this is a this is a good opportunity. I want to use my platform to share this, just to see whoever it could impact, and people might want to get involved. But um, you have Thanks. something called No Fret Guitar Camp, and uh, just tell us a little bit about what it is, and then we can go into how it started. Sure. So we we work with churches, and we provide um, free guitars and free lessons. Uh, to underserved youth, and we've now had camps at more than 100 churches in 14 states for 984 kids who have received hope, joy, connection to Jesus. And, you know, as you know, anybody involved in, in worship music knows, you know, we feel strongly that, that God uses music to help connect to us, and we use music to help connect to God. And with these kids, um, you know, I mean, my kids during the summer, you know, they'd have dance camp, band camp, karate camp, soccer camp, you know, all kinds of camps. And these uh, underserved kids, they got squat. And wow. uh, so with this camp, working with the churches, um, it's just, it's been a stunning success, stunning success. And that, that's great to hear. I was actually just talking to somebody yesterday at my church and they were just briefly talking about how I got started with guitar and, you know, I got started with guitar, not for the right reasons, not to please Jesus, not to use my gifts for the Lord, but for other selfish reasons. Pick up but, girls. 
Yeah, exactly. I've said it. I've said that on my on this channel before, and but um, but God used that to bring me to the church to to give me a gift um, and a skill that I could serve with. And when it, when that switched over, man, it's it's been great. And I've, I've you know I've benefited from it. I my full time job is being able to play guitar right. at church, you know, and lead worship. And it's just amazing what God can do with that gift. And I I think of that story of you're saying, you know, there's a lot of kids don't just have that opportunity. So. If you could go into like how this got started, like how did you come about this idea? So um, when I retired from the University of South Florida, I'd always been involved in youth ministry in my church. I want to get more involved in youth ministry. And we have our church has a children's center in Kwamshlanga, South Africa. So I went there, spent a week there to put in some satellite based Internet and some took uh, 60 little tablets so they could learn language and math and stuff like that. But while I was there just for fun, I had uh, purchased a couple of guitars in South Africa, took them out to the camp. And during the week I was there, when I wasn't doing the computer stuff, I uh, taught a couple of kids to play G, C, D, and E minor. They did Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. They did it in English, and they did it in their native tongue of Indabelli. And it was yeah. just, it, it was a cool, fun thing. So the next summer... My wife and I were talking about, you know, what mission would we do? We normally do a mission trip to West Virginia, which is a really, really good thing. But I was looking for something that would be more sustainable. Um, and, you know, that, that whole expression about, you know, give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach him to fish. He never goes to church on Sunday. No, that's not quite how it goes. <laughs> but, but you know the story. And, yeah. um, and so my wife said, you know, why don't you go? teach a camp in the inner city here in Tampa, Florida. And I was reluctant because a couple of reasons. One is I didn't think the inner city kids would want to learn guitar. I was pretty prejudiced thinking they would only like electronic music, only like rap music. And, and she said, you know, we'll go down, go down there and see. So I went there and found a, a vacant lot where some kids were kicking around a soccer ball, went out in the middle of the lot and, did the universal timeout, you know, come here. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, you kids, you know anybody that might want to learn guitar? And they started jumping up and down saying, pick me, pick me, pick me. My wife was wow. sitting in the car. She said she got goosebumps when she saw him doing that. So that's kind of how it started. But even then, I was still a little reluctant because what I did in South Africa with the guitars was for fun. I was there mm -hmm. to do a mission with these tablets and stuff, and the <clears> guitar was just for fun. And I said, you know, this will be fun, but it's not a mission. You know, I need, I need to be doing a mission. And then I talked to my pastor, and he said, let me understand. You're going to give these kids hope, joy. You're going to connect them to Jesus. You're going to do daily devotions. You're going to do praise and worship songs as well as some other contemporary songs they might like. You're not only going to teach them to play, but you're going to give them the guitar they get to keep. It's a great mission. So wow. I said, okay. All right. We'll do it. So I, I did that one, six kids. And uh, while the, it was being scheduled, another church heard that I was doing it and said, hey, can you come do it at our church? And I thought, well, you know, I bought six guitars, but the guitar is a lot cheaper than my airfare to South Africa. So, yeah, I, 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 I could do another camp. I got all summer and I got all life now because I'm retired. And then my <laughs> own church said, hey. We hear you're doing these two camps. Can you do one at our church? So that first year, we actually did three camps, 18 kids. And uh, and it just worked so well that mm. the next year we thought, you know, if we can package this, if I can get the materials, the curriculum together, if we can provide the guitars, then if a church just has a single volunteer that can play G, C, D, and E minor, they'll be in business mm. and we can make this thing grow. And wow. that's exactly what happened. And now it's grown. Wow. That, that is, that's so good. I, I think of the good that you're doing of kids who may not even know the gospel. You know, they say music is like portable theology. So, right. I mean, just teaching them those songs, they can take that with them and the skill. That's, that's so good. So, uh, where do you get the guitars that you, you say you give them guitars, right? You're giving these away. We do. Where and, do you get uh, these? It's a, a quick story about that. When that first year, when I was going to do the camp with six kids, 
I was going to ask my friends who had guitars in the closet that didn't play, you know, hey, we donate the guitar, then we give these kids. And then I got concerned that we'd have some really good guitars and we might have some really bad guitars. And I'd have kids there, some with good, some with bad. So then I said, you know, I go to Walmart and I buy a $99 guitar at Walmart and give it to the kids. They'll love it. And then my uh, wise pastor said, so let me understand. What's going to happen is you'll give these kids a guitar. They'll open it up. They'll be thrilled. They'll go home. They'll have an Uncle Bob that goes, well, that's a piece of junk guitar. <laughs> and then the kid's heart can be broken. They're not going to play. Mm. So we decided <clears throat> we're going to get them good guitars. So we're doing acoustic electric guitars. They're wow. depending on about a $250 guitar, a really nice guitar. Now the kid takes it home, and they got an Uncle Bob that goes, wow, that's better than any guitar I ever had. And now the kids, you know, they're into it, and they they loving it. So we, we give them all the same guitar, and uh, like I said, we've now given away 984 guitars. Wow. Man, you're, you're coming up on 1,000 guitars. That's Yeah, we're, we're pretty excited about the 1,000 and trying to figure out how to celebrate that. And right. Whether we pick a student and say they're the 1,000 student, or yeah. we actually don't know how to do that, but it's happening real soon. <laughs> Man, that that's awesome. That that is that's that's really cool. I mean, I, this just gets me excited. That's why I wanted to have you on the channel because uh, where can people find you, real quick? I know how YouTube audio audience retention is. Sometimes people click off when it gets too far in the video, and I want them to be able to find you. Is you have a website? Yeah, it's nofretguitarcamp.org. dot um, org, okay. and we've also got Facebook No Fret Guitar Camp and Instagram No Fret Guitar Camp. Okay. And if we had a volunteer that would help us with Twitter, we'd have one of those, but. <laughs> we, we are a 100% volunteer ministry. Okay. Later, we'll talk about that because we actually want to change that. But, okay. Uh, so it's, it's all volunteers. Okay. Well, I'll link, I'll link that down below your, your, your link. So they'll be able to see it anytime Great. in the video. But so we'll go into that. Yeah. The, the 100% volunteer. Yeah. It, it's been a, you know, it's been an interesting thing because it, it like I said, we didn't plan for it to grow. This was not mm. some big business plan or something. And it just it kept it kept growing and growing and growing, and now it, it's frankly bigger than me, and and you know it, it's me and some vol- really great volunteers, but you know as you know you know to to do the do the website to keep up keep up with these. In fact, <laughs> just today I got an email from a church in uh, Kearney, Kearney, Nebraska. Saying, "Hey, we got two deliveries of guitars. What's up?" Wow. We we accidentally sent them twelve. Um, so the administration of this has just gotten bigger than I am, and the the program is so um, effective, both for the kids for the ministry, um, but it's cost effective too. We have donors that are making all this happen. That you know, this summer we plan to do twenty five camps. 150 kids, 150 guitars, and we already have 37 signed up 30 in 14 states this summer. And so we, our board has talked about we, we need to raise more money than just the money to buy all these guitars um, so we can hire somebody to be a part-time executive director or something and, and let this thing grow instead of doing 150 guitars, doing 500 guitars each year. Um, because there's just, it's so good. You know, all the churches have done it. It's just so good. And uh, so we, we think it could grow a lot if it wasn't for just me. <laughs> I lost your audio. There it is. I, I muted myself because okay. I had to cough, <laughs> but I forgot to turn it back on. But uh, yeah, maybe someone who's listening to this will figure out some way to get involved or something, take it, you know, and just help out. I don't, I don't know. You know, you never know. So yeah, let me, before we talk about it, what would help me uh, mm. and help the ministry, um, let me talk for a second about, you know, why I think a worship leader should be interested in this. Mm. And, and it's really twofold. One is like building the next generation of, of worship leaders. We have, we've got a number of the kids who have gone on and they're, they're now playing in, in the youth praise and worship team. Um, 
it's not about developing really great guitar players. That's not our point. You know, we're we're helping them deal with stress, and anxiety. We're connecting mm-hmm. them to God, and and as a mission, that should be a really attractive one for a worship leader. But we you know worship leaders are very busy. And the other thing that's really cool is, I think most worship leaders would like to have more guitar players. And it's not necessarily the kids that are going to be that guitar player. But we found a lot of churches, when they see the video we have on how to do the instruction, again, mm-hmm. we're, te- we're teaching G, C, D, and E minor. And then they can play 100 songs. Um, that they have some volunteer in the church who's not necessarily good enough to be on the worship team depending on your worship team, but they play guitar and, and they'd like to do this as a mission thing. It, it doesn't take much time. It's only 10 hours total. During the summer, we do it five days in a row, two hours a day, 10 hours total. And we've proven with 984 kids that in 10 hours, we can teach them to play. And, and you look at the videos on our website, the kids playing. But you're also developing that next level of, of volunteer that, like, like in my church, we we had a great worship team, but it was pretty small, and we wanted to do other things, like go to a homeless center and play, um, mm. go out in the community and play, go to a nursing home and play, you know, do other activities. But our worship team was, was slam-packed busy. Our worship leaders were too busy. So we had, I don't want to call it the, you know, the, the B team. <laughs> you know, I, don't want, <laughs> I don't want to say that, but I did. Um you know, a, a group of people that are, are definitely have good hearts, good spirits, and want to go out and make music to these other groups and, uh, mm. you know, play once a month at a homeless shelter or something. And so you're developing that next level of volunteer by letting them teach instead of necessarily the worship leader themselves teaching. So the demands on the worship leader for these camps are so small. So, mm. I mean, some, some like to teach it themselves. Um, and others get volunteers to do it. So it, yeah. it's a, a cool thing that, that, that we think worship leaders would, would really like. So you, you you said there's a video. So basically someone says, hey, I, I do want to do this at my church. What do you give them as a resource to help them run this camp? Yeah, so we give them, there's a package of materials. We give them um, the big things, what we call the playbook. It's a coach's playbook and a student playbook. The student playbook has, I don't know, maybe 20 songs in it. Uh, we try to pick, you know, contemporary praise and worship songs. And then we also have in there songs like Stand By Me, uh, Don't Worry, Be Happy, um, Lean On Me, you know, a few other um, songs like that. And so we send them the playbook. And it's your typical, you know, song sheet with the chord, you know, up above the mm-hmm. word, you know, where you play the chord. And we have all the chord diagrams on each page so they don't have to flip back and forth and see, you know, where to put their fingers. Um, We provide a video for the instructors. Um, Here's how we do it. Um, You don't have to do it the way we do it. But, you know, we we find it works two ways. Really good guitar players tend to want to teach the kids too much. Mm, And, And if you're only got 10 hours... You can't teach them too much. You get off in the weeds, and then they're not going to learn. If you focus on GCD minor and making those hands move, then they can play songs and they can write music, which some mm. of the kids have done. Um, so for the really good guitar players, it kind of helps them come down to the level of the students with the with the time they have. Yeah. For the volunteers to say, you know, yeah, I can play guitar, but I'm not good enough to teach. You know, I just play cowboy chords. That's all I can do. I'm not good enough to teach. Right. Well, this video shows them, yep, you are good enough to teach because that's all mm. we're doing too. And so it, it encourages those who don't think they're good enough, but they know they play a little bit. And it also helps those that are trying to teach them too much. So we provide mm. the videos. Um, we also have some other ancillary things. The churches often ask, well, how do we pick the kids? You know, if, if we've got 20 kids, how do we pick them? Uh, how we limit it to six. And so we provide some materials for that. Um, my favorite are the churches who don't do it for what we call their kids at all. Mm. They, they use it as an outreach. Um, we've had several that have done it for, in group foster homes. So it's okay. foster home kids. 
kids that have never been in church before in their lives. And now, like, four of the six of them from this foster home said, hey, can we join your youth group? Um, so there's a lot of different ways to use it, both for the churches, quote, in the, in, for the kids in the church and as an outreach. And outreach is certainly our favorite. Wow. Yeah, for sure. Man, that's that's really that's really exciting. So, um, I'm 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 excited to see where God's going to take this. You know, almost at a thousand guitars, and then one day it'll be five thousand, ten thousand. You know, who knows? And it's just changing changing people's lives. That's great. So you mentioned um, talking about you know for for worship leaders to get involved, but what about your needs uh, at No Fret Guitar Camp? Well, we uh, again since we're all volunteer. Um, you know, we definitely need help with, uh, social media. Um, you know, we have a Facebook and an Instagram, but we're not good about posting and we don't know how to do it right. And, you know, we don't know the difference between a feed and a reel and a chat or, you know, whatever story and who on. knows what we, we don't yeah. know which one we should be doing. <laughs> so, so we need help with social media. We need help with graphics. Um, mm. the playbook we have is pretty good. It could be improved. Um, and certainly on, on the website and, uh, on those social media things, you know, having better graphics would, would help. Yeah. Um, we've been really fortunate. We've only held two fundraisers in our six years of, of life. We have a lot of individuals who donate, but we held two fundraisers and we had some, some artists, um, volunteer to come play and mm. uh so that that was pretty cool we had a yeah. mural, mural anderson you probably don't know her but she's probably one of the most famous harp guitar players in the okay. united states she plays a lot with tommy manuel i'm sure you've heard of tommy manuel yeah um and she came in and played for our fundraiser um, oh, wow. so that that's pretty good the reverend jimmy bratcher a blues preacher from okay. kansas he played for our fundraiser. Wow. Um, and now we're trying to figure out, you know, if we really do want to try to hire somebody to work part-time to take over from me and take this thing to that generation. Not that I'm that old, but I'm getting up there. Um, yeah. And, and we want this thing to keep going. So we're trying to find out how we can raise enough money to, to hire somebody and, right. and take this to the next level. Wow. Well, man, I appreciate your heart. I'm glad to have you on the channel and just be able to talk about the behind the scenes and how people can get involved. If you're watching this video, click the, click the link below. Uh, you can get involved, have this at your church, have it be an outreach event. You can even reach out to see how you could be of help. And uh, Gary, glad to glad to meet you in person. Hey, I, I appreciate this time and uh, look forward to uh, having one of these at your church. Yes. Yes. I'm excited about that. <laughs> All right, man. Well, Appreciate it. If you like the video, like it. Leave a comment down below if you're interested in this, and we'll see you in the next video. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.